So yesterday we discussed definitions mostly groups, group multiplication table, subgroup, cosets, left coset, right coset, normal subgroup or invariant subgroup. And then we had done um, some problems illustrating how to find out subgroups of a given group <coughs> and how to choose how to find out whether a given subgroup is a normal subgroup or not. So there are a few more things that I could not complete from what I planned yesterday. <coughs> so I will try to finish those things in the first half hour or so today. For any given group, there are two invariant subgroups which can be constructed. Okay? So, first one that is for a given group we can construct two invariant subgroups. First such subgroup is called center of a group. And we will denote this by a letter Z. So if I call this group as G, center of G, I will call it as Z. Now what is this Z? This Z is set of all elements A such that AB is equal to BA for all B in G. What do we understand by this? That means all those elements which will commute with all the elements of the group. All those elements that commute with all the elements of the group. Immediately you can uh, realize that identity is one such element. So Z is at least identity. Identity will commute with all elements in the group. Okay, so pick out all those elements that commute with the, uh, all elements of the group and that group is called the that is called the center okay now this is a normal subgroup of g okay z is a normal subgroup of G. Okay? We will show this in the tutorial. Many of the details I will <coughs> do it in the tutorials. The second group is called the commutator subgroup. We will denote this with the letter Q. Okay? Now, given any two elements A, B in G, we define commutator of A, B as 
q of a comma b is equal to a b a inverse b inverse. Okay, so this is the commutator of elements AB. You can immediately see that this satisfies these properties. Q of AB inverse is equal to Q of BA. And C Q of A B C inverse can be written as Q of C A C inverse C B C inverse. So, these are the properties of such a commutator which can be verified from the definition. Now, you construct this group Q with these elements q a 1 comma b 1 q a 2 comma b 2 and so on up to q some a m comma b m with all possible pairs take all possible pairs of this group group and then put the resulting commutators as a set. Okay, so Q is a normal subgroup normal subgroup of G. For example, in the tutorial we will show show that Q is equal to E C3 C32 and Z equal to E for C3. This group we talked about yesterday. So, for C3V, this is the commutator group and this is the center ok. So, we will work this out again in tutorial. Next I will define a group G is called simple, a simple group, a group G is called simple if it has no non-trivial invariant subgroups. A group G is called simple if it has no non-trivial invariant subgroups. Okay. Further, a group G is called semi simple semi simple if it has no non trivial
invariant abelian subgroups okay now notice if if g is simple implies g is semi simple but converse is not true if g is semi, semi simple doesn't mean that g is simple okay yesterday we had this question whether if you have an invariant subgroup whether the subgroup is always abelian so this tells you that if you if you if you if you say that you have if it is a simple that means no invariant subgroup so no abelian subgroup also if it is semi simple there is no abelian invariant abelian subgroup but it can have a invariant non abelian subgroup so it's not simple so yesterday we uh, said the answer is no that is true from this context we can still think of constructing an example okay so this is uh, so this so we have defined four things center of a group and commutator commutator subgroup these two are definitely two invariant subgroups okay now you may wonder i am saying here that we can construct two invariant subgroups then how can a group be simple it turns out that these constructions will not be non trivial subgroups they will be trivial subgroups what are the trivial subgroups identity and the full group okay so that's the huh in this in this example but it's not necessary yeah no it's a trivial but i have a non trivial subgroup here for example if group is abelian then what what will be the center entire group and commutator group only identity right like that so <coughs> in some sense the non uh, the, the cardinality of this q will tell you um, how far away is is the group from being abelian okay if this q is big uh cardinality of q is big that means it is more non abelian in some sense it is like a norm we fix how far is it from an abelian concepts first is called automorphism automorphism is a map it is a map tau from group to itself from g to g it is a map from group to itself this tau is 1 to 1 on to and tau of a into tau of b is equal to tau of ab for all a comma b in g it preserves the it preserves the group multiplication table this statement tells you it preserves the group multiplication table what should happen to the identity identity should be mapped down to identity only what about the inverse mapping of this 
it is tau of a inverse. So, it is a map from a group to itself. So, any mapping which satisfies these properties is called an automorphism. One particular example of this automorphism is for a fixed element G we can define tau G of A as G A G inverse. You can verify that this mapping will satisfy all these properties. So, this is an automorphism. Okay? Now, this automorphism is actually 